Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ohm meters, which is very very important topic in electronic measurements and in instrumentation. Till now, we have seen the basic TR sound meter has been converted into either ammeter or voltmeter. The next important meter is ohm meter. Ohm meter name clearly tells that it is used to measure the unknown resistance value ohms. Unknown resistance value. Okay, there are two types of ohm meters depending upon the meter connected to the unknown resistor. One is series type, another one is shunt type. Remember the types of ohm meter are classified based upon the meter connection with the unknown resistor unknown resistor if unknown resistor is connected in series with the meter then that type of construction comes under series type ohm meter and if unknown resistor is connected in shunt with the meter then that type of construction is known as ohm meter shunt type let us see the circuit diagram and the dial of series ohm meter till now we have not discussed the dial of any ohm meter uh, uh, voltmeter or ammeter but in the ohm meter case definitely we should look for what is the dial of series and shunt ohm meter because there is some specialty if you see the dial of this meter left side we have infinity and right side we have zero that means the meter is calibrated from right to left the meter is calibrated from right to left generally any meter is calibrated from left to right that means the zero value will be here and infinity or maximum value will be here but in the case of series type ohm meter in the case of remember this this dial is only for series type ohm meter again for shunt type the meter is calibrated from left to right zero is on the left side and the infinity is on the right side but in the series case it is calibrated in special way like zero is on the right side and infinity is on the left side i will tell why <coughs> remember okay coming to the construction of this series type ohm meter this is the meter with a current im or ifsd here the current is known as ifsd full scale deflection current or meter current ifsd both are same that meter is having a shunt resistor r2 that meter is having a resistor r2 in shunt but r2 here we have not taken a fixed value it is a variable resistor it is a variable resistor the purpose of this variable resistor is to make deflection zero in unmeasured conditions and r1 is the series resistor which is connected in series with the this parallel connection like a meter in parallel with the r2 resistor r1 is a series resistor and whereas there are two points a and b a and b in between these two we are connecting the unknown resistor rx unknown resistor rx here we have additionally a battery additionally we have a battery v here what is the purpose of battery here why we have not used the battery in previous cases like uh, ammeter and voltmeter because in the previous case we have measured active quantities remember in the previous case we have measured active quantities like voltage and current they are having the capacity to generate current themselves but here we are measuring the quantity name resistor that resistor is a passive quantity it cannot generate voltage and current suppose if battery is not there suppose if battery is not there and resistor is connected in between these two terminals e and b then who will produce the current okay that is a problem so r as the unknown quantity is a passive quantity definitely we should give some external dc supply that is given by the battery voltage it is the battery given voltage okay hope you understand so now this is the current position where the current is flowing started at this battery and enters into this r2 parallel resistor and as well as this meter current ifsd and this again the same current flows through the resistor r1 okay 
Suppose, listen, now I am explaining about the dial of series ohmmeter. Assume that Rx is equal to 0. Assume Rx is equal to 0. That means 0 ohms. What do you mean by 0 ohms? Is it short circuited or open circuited? 0 ohms is nothing but short circuited. So that means the points A and B are short circuited. The points A and B are short circuited. In such case, what is the amount of current flowing through the entire circuit? Let the total current be IT. Let the total current originated from the battery will be IT. Then what is the total current flowing through the circuit when there is no resistor Rx? When Rx is equal to 0 means it is a short circuit. What is the total current? Nothing but IT is maximum. Maximum current flows. Maximum current flows. Uh, what is the reason for the needle to deflect? Here there is a needle. On this scale there is a needle. This needle initial position is here. Always the initial position is here. Remember this meter responds for DC current. DC current. Current always is used to say current only. Not uh, voltage and not uh, resistors. The needle deflects for DC current. This is the initial position. Initial position. That means when IT is maximum, what is the current flowing through the circuit is maximum, then where the needle has to indicate, this is the position. This is the position. That means the current is maximum, but what is the resistance value? Zero. That's where it is zero ohms. Current is maximum, but resistance is zero. Take another case where Rx is equal to infinity ohms, nothing but open circuited. Take Rx is equal to infinity, nothing but open circuited. So if you open circuit the terminals A and B, if you open circuit the terminals A and B, battery is opened. Battery positive terminal, of course, it is connected to meter, but what about the negative terminal? Negative terminal is open circuited. As the circuit is not closed, what is the amount of current flowing through the meter? Zero. Then the indication is at the initial position. Then the indication is at the initial position. That means resistance is infinity. Hope you understand why the dial is designed like this. So when the needle indicating the maximum position, that means current is flowing maximum, but the resistance is zero. Current is flowing zero, current is zero, but resistance is infinity. So in this way, the meter is calibrated. This is the calibration. This is what the calibration. Calibration of series ohm meter is very, very important because it is completely opposite to the normal or conventional meters. Okay. Now, let us calculate in the same, like in the ammeters and voltmeters, what we have done in the same case. Here also we will do the same. What is that? In the case of, uh, in the case of ammeters, we have calculated the resistance RSH. We have calculated the resistance RSH. In the case of voltmeter, we have calculated the multiplier resistor RSH, RS. Multiplier resistor RS. Now, in the case of ohm meter, what we need to calculate by seeing the circuit diagram, we can easily say what we need to calculate R1 and R2. We should calculate the values R1 and R2. Okay. Now, let us see how to calculate the resistor R1 and R2. So, current flowing through the meter movements depends on the magnitude of the unknown resistor. This is what we have discussed. A brief idea is given here in this slide. The meter deflection is non-linearly related to the value of unknown resistor Rx. That is what I have explained as 0 ohms or infinity ohms depending upon the resistor value Rx. The major drawback is as the internal voltage decreases, reduces the current and the meter will not get 0 ohms. It is a drawback when there is no potentiometer. We have, tell, we have taken the R2 value as potentiometer. If it is a fixed value, this is the problem. Internal voltage decreases, reduces the current and meter will not go to 0 ohms. So for that what we need to do, we need to adjust the potentiometer. Meter battery voltage always reduces as days goes on. 
okay so always we need to adjust the potentiometer to get the initial value in a proper way so that's why r2 counteracts the voltage drop to achieve the zero ohms now r1 and r2 are determined by the value of rx see what do you mean by rh here rh is the resistance we are introducing to calculate the values of r1 and r2 rh is nothing but half of full scale deflection resistance half of full scale deflection resistance in the entire circuit how many resistors are there three three resistors listen carefully in the entire circuit how many resistors are there three resistors r1 r2 and rx okay now we have divided the circuit into two parts until a and b points and after a and b points so till a and b points the circuit is having two resistors r1 and r2 that is taken as half of the full scale deflection resistance and another half is depending upon the unknown resistance so two resistors one half is equal to unknown resistance another half is circuit components on r1 and r2 okay so rh how we can write rh formula rh is equal to i said what i told i will write here see we have taken a meter here okay and we have one resistor r2 which is nothing but a potentiometer that is connected like this and what is another resistor this is r1 and this is r2 okay between these two points this is the point b and this is the point a externally we have one more resistor rx we have taken rx as rh rx as rh that means the circuit is divided into two portions one portion is having a resistor rh and another portion is having a resistor one more rh so so what is the total resistance of the circuit including the unknown resistance that is 2 rh okay so if you remove the unknown resistor if you remove the unknown resistor see here the calculations we have done when we are eliminating the unknown resistance value remember remember we are calculating the unknown resistor values we are calculating the resistor values r1 and r2 by eliminating the unknown resistor rx okay that means at present how many res how, how much is the total resistance present rh only because we have eliminated half of the rh value in the name of unknown resistor value so how we can write rh if you say rh r1 is there r2 is there and internally some resistance is there for this meter that is rm so how we can write rm r2 are in parallel and r1 is in series so we can write rh as we can write rh as r1 plus r2 parallel rm r1 plus r2 parallel rm so r2 parallel rm is nothing but r2 rm by r2 plus rm now let us take the total current here it is a battery here there is a battery it is the total current it so how can write it it is equal to v by rh because the circuit is having a resistance rh i am saying the resistance value current value everything only from point a to point b only by eliminating the unknown resistor value that means half of the circuit we have eliminated half of the circuit resistance we have eliminated okay so only rh is there so that's why total total current it is equal to v by rh and the shunt current through r2 is equal to it minus ifsd total current is it okay we know total current is equal to it here it is ifsd so how we can write i2 it is equal to it minus ifsd okay it is i2 is equal to it minus ifsd now let us calculate what is the values of r2 and r1 <coughs> see voltage are equal in parallel we know this so that's why mm, sorry vsh is equal to vsh is equal to vm vsh is nothing but voltage across that resistance r2 and vm is the voltage across that meter so vsh how we can write i2 r2 is equal to i fsd full scale deflection current into rm 
meter resistance or internal resistance. What is I2? I2 is equal to already we have taken. I2 is equal to IT total current minus IFST. Okay. So how we can write R2 now? R2 is equal to IFSD into RM divided by IT minus IFSD. What is IT? What is IT from the previous slide? What is IT? V by RH. So IFSD into RM divided by <coughs> V by RH minus IFST that is equal to IFSD into RM into RH divided by V minus IFSD into RH. This is the formula for R2. So R2 is equal to IFSD into RM into RH by V minus IFSD into RH. Okay. In the next lecture, we will calculate the R1 value followed by we will also see the shunt type ohmmeter. Thank you.